Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Dewan Lightfoot. Today I'm here with Hank Preston. He's a principal engineer and a CCIE with DevNet at Cisco. What's up, Hank? Not much, man. Thanks for the time. Thanks yes. for coming out. Hey, I'm glad to be here at Cisco Live. So, you've done some in interesting things in the industry right now. You know, it's it's an interesting time in the industry. So, I, I got into networking, um, honestly, because I didn't want to be a developer. Like, that's really where it comes back to is I went to school, I came out of school, I, I thought I was going to be a software developer. Right. And uh, my first time looking at it, I decided I hated coding in Java. I just despised <laughs> Java. You didn't like compiling? No, I just, it just, it never clicked with me. Right. And so I, I looked for something else to do. And I said, you know, infrastructure is kind of fun. So I went into the infrastructure path and, and I weaved around and eventually made my way to networking. Right? I like networking, I liked the uh, connecting things together. Yes. Like many network engineers, I, I stumbled across the Cisco certifications and the programs and I worked my way up through CCNA and NP and, and eventually IE, super proud of having my IE, I'm actually uh, working on the research right now yeah. as it goes through. And uh, here at Cisco I came through because I think it's every network engineer's dream at some point to have a chance to carry a Cisco badge. Yes. But what was interesting is when I came to Cisco, it was it was as cloud and all of these new things were popping up. And so I came into Cisco and immediately got kind of put back in into looking at development again. Mm. And so I've been working on kind of network automation and development at Cisco kind of since Cisco got into it itself. Right. So my, it's funny, a lot of the things you mentioned, like before I got into development, I was doing Java. Mm. I didn't like it. The, the, the Java virtual machine just frustrated me that I couldn't run the same code. You know, um, without installing Java somewhere, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really like that. So that, that's similar. But also, um, I started out in Windows mm -hmm. and doing PowerShell and batch files. I didn't really enjoy that. What made you enjoy, you know, network automation mm -hmm. today? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and, and we'll talk a bit about the journey, but it really comes down to Python as a language right. is what sold me back on development. Um, I, was, I was tapped early on um, to be one of the first few engineers at Cisco to kind of start diving into that. And Cisco sent me to some Python training classes and I went, okay, that's sure, it takes me out of the field for a little bit. Okay. And I just fell in love with how easy Python was. It, it didn't have compile, it ran everywhere. Right. Um, we were putting Python on our network switches and routers so I could actually run Python code right at the edge. And it's just, it clicked and it was easy to work with. Um, it felt like English, like it, it just made sense. And so I was able to watch and in the early days of Python and networking, um, it's, it was really exciting because you you'd figure something out on your own and then somebody would do it way better and then offer a library and code samples. Ah, yeah. And so it's it's been this, this great love affair between Python and networking um, where there's so many good ideas that are there and I like to joke that we steal or borrow <laughs> from other folks to make right. it easy and you don't have to do it yourself you're not on your own and and the community has been really open and inviting about finding good ways to do pieces and so I, I put my interest in development solely at the feet of Python as a language right Wow there's so many um, nuggets that you gave right there one was that you don't have to basically write your own code this code ready-made the scripts that are out there um, and people should embrace co collaboration mm -hmm. but what, do, what are your thoughts on that i do it's it's it, we joke a little bit I, I think that at the heart of a lot of network engineers there's this this bit of fear about like sharing too much and and if somebody else knows something then then it's not my job anymore right. and job security is a big issue and there's the joke that like knowledge is not a, a zero-sum game mm -hmm. if i teach you something that doesn't mean that i don't know it anymore right. And, and I think that that's been this openness that this programmability has gone through um, between folks like yourself out there on the social media sharing what we know. Um, we've doing a ton of stuff in DevNet to try to get material out there. There's email learning courses to learn Python for engineers, YouTube videos all over the place. It seems like the community has opened up to share and I love that that part about network automation and programmability um, it seems like it's opened it up way more than it ever felt like it was before. Okay, okay. That's, that's great. So how can network engineers of today utilize Cisco um, DevNet to prepare, well not even prepare, to better position themselves as a network engineer in today's um, landscape? Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic question. So I've been at Cisco for about 10 years. I was originally a solutions architect and systems engineer helping okay. customers kind of figure out what Cisco tech to go through. And I joined DevNet about two and a half years ago for one very specific reason is I was out there talking with customers, talking with networking teams, and I was just getting really frustrated because I'd be out there and, and I'd see 
network engineers questioning the future of the industry, right. questioning the future of, did I make the right choice being a network engineer? Uh, SDN is everywhere. I'm hearing that, that certifications don't make any sense anymore, and they just didn't know what to do. Right. And so I talked with uh, Mandy Whaley, uh, our director here in DevNet, and Susie Wee, the VP, yes, yes. and I said, you know, I would love to come over and help build up material and give something to network engineers so they don't have to feel like they're on their own. Right. Give them a jumping off point, give them some good ideas, and get network engineers excited about being network engineers again. And, and that's what really drove me to DevNet. And I'm really proud of what we've done over the last two years, and not all on our own. Right. Along that same time, the community has blown up all over the place. And so now, if you are a network engineer and you're worried about evolving your skill set and picking up programmability, don't worry so much. Just be open to trying new things. Come on over to DevNet. Um, I actually did. Uh, they sent me in, uh, in San Jose, Cisco's headquarters, for about two weeks in front of a green screen recording a video series that, that we titled Network Programmability yes. Basics. I shared that out a few times. Yeah, so we've got 26 videos and I wrote them specifically so that if you've never done programmability, I take you through the basics and jumpstart you like two months ahead in your journey. Give you enough foundation knowledge so that you can start asking questions and then dive into other material, explore on your own. Um, we've got the Start Now section of DevNet, so you can go to our website, slash Start Now, get pointers to different labs to go through. Um, join the social community. If you haven't done that yet, follow DevNet on Cisco, follow Lab every day. Um, there's so many people that are out there willing to give you suggestions to go through. It's, it's really almost overwhelming with how much choices you yes. have now, uh, less than not having enough. So. Yes, so all, when it, you mentioned DevOps, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think as network engineers, especially those that are looking to become network engineers, the term, they think developers, but we're actually as a network engineer with a, in the ops portion mm -hmm. of DevOps. So with that being said, there's something a lot of organizations are working towards and that's infrastructure as code. Mm -hmm. How do network engineers fit into infrastructure as code? Yeah, it's a great question. So the, the DevOps um, transition that hits the software development space and like applications has been amazing and has offered so many benefits to organizations. Right. And that we're trying to figure out how can we learn from those principles inside of infrastructure and inside of networking. And so I talk a lot about net DevOps, mm -hmm. right? And it's the idea there is taking the DevOps culture and ideas and principles and figuring out how to apply them effectively to networking. Because um, I joke, in, in the software world, if you make an update, well, you can deploy a brand new application and destroy your old one. Um, I don't know any company that if you have to add a new VLAN to your data center, you're allowed to build an entirely new data center network and then throw away the old one. Right. And so those concepts don't translate one for one, but the ideas are still there. And so that's what we're trying to do in that DevOps is figure that out. Infrastructure as code is this interesting concept. It's, it started and fundamentally it's a cloud concept, right? So we do infrastructure as code and how to de deploy things to AWS or Google or OpenStack. And you can do networks and infrastructure as code. You can find all sorts of scripts that'll do that. I talk about network as code because infrastructure as code is so much focused on what happens inside of a cloud but what about the network that it takes to, to build the cloud, right? right. The stuff that's underneath, because right. what is the cloud but somebody else's data, data center, center right. right? So there's there's the network under the hood of the cloud. What about the network that it takes to get to the cloud, your right. wide area network, the connectivity between them? Yeah. What about your wireless network and your campus network that goes through? To me, that's network as code. Right. And I see so many people focused on infrastructure as code inside of the cloud that I started talking about network as code. How can we do those same principles for our entire network? Right. Not just the easy stuff in the cloud. And that's, I think, where this transition with network automation is gonna be huge, is as we kind of we start tackling the harder problems of dealing with physical infrastructure, the infrastructure under the hood, uh, the connectivity, the stuff that is the backbone of every network, right. we can't ignore that anymore. We have to bring that into the loops of DevOps and all these other pieces. I see, I see. You got some great information, Hank. Mm -hmm. um, we're here at Cisco Live, and there's so many different booths and learning opportunities here at Cisco Live, and online at um, the DevNet sandbox and just DevOps, period. Exactly. Exciting time. I wanna thank you for coming on the channel. I was happy too, man. Fellow Ohioan, I cannot believe we live less than two hours apart and we yeah. had to come to Spain, man. Yeah, come to Spain. Thanks. All right, man. thanks. Thank you, man.